uh, continuing, FBI gags state and local police on capabilities of cell phone spy gear and the uh, doppelganger cell towers they're putting up all over the country. That's why you see police chiefs going, we don't know what these towers are, but we're sure it's not law enforcement because that would be illegal. <laughs> like the FBI's God, just 30 years ago in this country, local police wouldn't do anything the FBI said unless they had a court order because it was called jurisdiction. Now they've been so federalized and been made deputies in so many cases that when they say jump, they ask how high. When they are about to literally go in a bathroom stall at the local police departments in this country now and close the door, they call the FBI up to ask, you know, when they can go. And I'm not even being sarcastic. It has gotten to that point where they ask the FBI if they can put ketchup on their French fries. It's beyond federalization. It is sycophantic and over the top. Well, let me just give everybody a newsflash. Um... I know the FBI is very upset about the fact that I talk about this. We're going to continue talking about it until the very end. It doesn't matter. We win. We're committed. We chose to do the right thing. It doesn't matter what you do to us. We're going to tell the truth. This is illegal. It's part of parallel construction. Everything's being spied on without warrants. It's part of social control, and they can't ever let the public know about it because it was premeditated. It is racketeering, and it is organized crime. You FBI guys went to school to learn what those terms mean so you can look in the mirror. Now, the average low-level FBI agents involved in bank robberies and missing persons, but mid-level, high-level, they are in on the game, and the black hats sit in their offices laughing at the goody two-shoes. Basically, the FBI is La Cosa Nostra in this country. That's why they took down La Cosa Nostra in the 50s, is that La Cosa Nostra had been blackmailing the FBI, and they said, you know what? It's time for you to learn who the boss is around here. And that's what happened. And you got rivalries between the FBI and the CIA. And I, I got to be honest, I, I don't know who's worse, FBI or CIA. I see the CIA doing absolutely horrible stuff all over the place. But then the CIA people I've known throughout my life and run into, and I've seen the congressional testimonies, they all sound just like me and absolutely hate what's going on. A lot of FBI agents don't like what's going on either, but they're so compartmentalized. And I've seen over 100, this was even in the New York Times, you can pull it up, FBI created almost all terror plots, is the headline. And they just go find mentally ill people and try to get them to carry out a terror attack and then put them in prison for life. I mean, it's not good to find a 72 IQ person that can hardly talk and try to get them to blow up the Christmas event in, uh, in Portland. It's just not cool. There it is. New York Times, Sunday Review. Terrorist plots hatched by the FBI. That's hatched. The United States has been narrowly saved from lethal terrorist plots in recent years. Or so it seemed. A would-be suicide bomber was intercepted on his way to the Capitol. A scheme to bomb synagogues and shoot Stinger missiles and military aircraft was developed by men in New Borough, New York. And a fanciful idea to fly explosive-laden model planes in the Pentagon and the Capitol was hatched in Massachusetts. But all of these dramas were facilitated by the FBI, whose undercover agents and informers pose as terrorists offering a dummy missile, fake C-4 explosives, a disarmed suicide vest, and rudimentary training. The suspects naively played their parts until they were arrested. Yeah, and, and I mean, it's one thing if you go out and ask somebody you think's planning an attack, hey, you want to do an attack, and they say, yeah, and you bust them, great. You stopped a real attack. But when you're just justifying budget, Here's the Guardian. Government agents directly involved in most high-level U.S. terror plots. And we've seen these cases. You remember at the RNC where there's this video back four or five years ago of these young, dumb kids like, I don't want to blow the mall off cocktails. I want to go home to mommy. I booked an airline flight tomorrow. I'm leaving. Get sent to prison. I'm not going to bomb anything. No, I want mommy. <laughs> I mean, all you do is totally discredit yourselves. And so now, see, I said I'd get to this. I'm, I'm going to go to your calls. FBI gags state and local police on capabilities of cell phone spy gear. It says it requires state and local police to keep quiet about the capabilities of the controversial type of surveillance gear that allows law enforcement to eavesdrop on cell phone calls and track individual people based on 
uh, signals emitted by their cell phone devices, according to Bureau document released recently under Freedom of Information Act request. And it just goes on. Folks, when people in Chicago or Austin go, look at this new cell tower, they go, that's just fake. Never mind it. Uh, it's just, no, it's not fake. It's a separate cell tower. We have the documents from insiders in Chicago, in Washington, in, in Seattle, in Austin, Texas, years ago. We know what they're doing. So that's an example of what's coming up. <clears throat> GOK, uh, GOP Obamacare bending over backwards for illegals. Illegal, uh, illegal immigration, a new wave of Central American kids will reach the U.S. soon, according to experts. And just like they lie about the NSA surveillance or the Stingray cell towers, they'll say, we don't know where the kids are coming from. We get a tip from ICE, go to the border, and there are the buses pulling in, loading the kids with vouchers with their parents on buses to be sent anywhere they want without IDs. Just like we told you, and it's now been confirmed, that they let the illegals fly with no IDs. The point is, none of it has to do with security. It has to do with us being pinned farm animals on the government slaughterhouse reservation, literally lied to about everything, preyed upon. And the government's just sitting back in a giant criminal conspiracy doing whatever they want, whenever they want, bringing in drugs, running snuff films, sex trade, little kids, whole nine yards, all comes out in the news. Nobody gets in trouble. We're going to cover that. It gets even sicker. London Independent, what does human meat taste like? That's in the science stack. And a story I didn't get to yesterday that I will cover in the next hour after we've taken a bunch of calls. Peter Thiel, the billionaire and Bilderberg Group member, tech entrepreneur on a mission to cheat death, and that's, again, a London Telegraph. My film Endgame, 2007, talks about Thiel, talks about the Bilderberg Group, and how their main mission is to live forever in a world government with forced population reduction. Now, Thiel isn't pushing population reduction that I've ever seen. And he does seem to be more libertarian of the whole constellation of globalists. So I'm not lionizing him. I'm just saying I've seen some good signs. Still, if, if, if I was a billionaire and I was Peter Thiel, I would be wanting life extension for myself and my family. The elite have made the decision that the public's not to get this. Now, when Endgame came out, the New York Times of all places <coughs> did a review of it, did a review of a film about my film. And basically made jokes, and a lot of other publications, MSNBC's done it, Salon's done it, a bunch of other publications, Huffington Post, have said Alex Jones is insane. He believes a world government's being formed, so the elite can merge with machines and basically live forever. Well, I didn't say that. I'm going to explain something again here. If I quote Hitler, it doesn't mean I'm Hitler. If I quote Christ, it doesn't mean I'm Christ. If I quote uh, Mahatma Gandhi, it doesn't mean I'm Mahatma Gandhi. This, the film has their quotes and where they said it and how they would release airborne Ebola and stuff like that. This film came out seven years ago. So we're going to play a clip of the three-hour film coming up after phone calls. Mike, Mick, Ryan, Aaron, Rambo, and others if you just joined us, the West is openly arming al-Qaeda, rebranding an ISIL, ISIS, IS to confuse the public and to confound them. Israel has shot down a fighter bomber that came into its airspace, was trying to fight al-Qaeda forces. That's AP. You've got the West and, and Turkey aiding them. They allow them to travel back and forth between Turkey and England. So what is your take on Obama without congressional approval? He came out and said... Congress is trying to give me an authorization. I don't need an authorization. Obama ignores Congress again to launch Syrian attack with no legal basis. President commits impeachable offense. Paul Joseph Watson, Infowars.com. I want to get your take specifically on this. Mike in Canada, you're on the air. Hey, Alex. Uh, so basically, I just I had a question for you, and usually you're pretty good at breaking down uh, uh, socially what it means. And my question is, 
is how can you take something so fake and such a facade like this jihad and have so many people willing to fight and put their lives on the line, yet when you look at your country, the United States, this beautiful country, hardly anybody is willing to put up a fight. Your own military isn't even taking back the country. You're right, uh, because it's primitive. Here's the bad guys crawling through burning cinder. Here's the guys in black uniforms. They say they're going to kill you, and people can say, okay, go kill them, protect me. It, it's like a remote control mentality or an instant drive-through mentality where we're a nation, by and large, not of trailblazers, not of innovators, but of sickly, uh, phony, tough, uh, sycophants. And that is for the average private citizen, is for the average government person. We are a corrupt nation now that has killed 54 million babies and rationalize that. So they're going to rationalize death panels for old people. They're going to rationalize secret death panels and death lists for veterans. They're going to rationalize... R Rahm Emanuel's brother wrote a op-ed piece. I've, I've got it here in the stack. I'm going to get to if I have time. It ties into Endgame. It ties into Peter Thiel saying why it's good to die at 75. That's the name, or I think it's why I hope to die. It's try to pull it up, guys. I can't find it here on the stack. I saw it this morning. The story's up on Infowars.com. Saying it's time to kill people basically at 75, and then it'll be time at 70, and then 65. That, that somehow if, if we lower the quality of the civilization, if somebody else loses, I win. There it is. Why I hope to die at 75. I bet you a lot of money that he doesn't want to die at 75. An argument that society and families and you will be better off if nature takes its course swiftly and promptly. So see, they've gone from there are no death panels to him saying, yes, there are death panels and uh, we need to force people into them. Ladies and gentlemen, we had whistleblowers on the show. They have tens of thousands of people, young, military, old, you name it, who they go in and you're not going to be given care. Just not going to happen. You're going to be given pills to go home and die. Because we don't want to take care of you, and they've sold the idea that, that we save money by killing you instead of just more fiat money, build the infrastructure. They created fiat money to tie our wealth to it to bankrupt us instead of using fiat to build the civilizations we could. And this is leering evil out in the open. And I bet you money, Ezekiel Emanuel, who is just... Again, this is about evil leering in our face and just accustoming us because they believe we have no soul now. They believe we have no compass, no rudder, no moral connection. The churches won't fight it. The churches won't criticize it. They're government run in most cases. And so we're helpless to them. So now they're leaning down going, there are death panels and we are going to reduce world population and we do need to kill babies up to age three. And you know what? We really are going to kill you. And so that's why America is like this. Europe's the same way now. Uh, wealth turned us into demons. And now we're going to lose everything. Does that answer your question, Mike? Oh, well, you know, just, just think about it. Uh, back in 2009, the American people had something like uh, $400 billion stolen from them. Uh, we fast forward to Clinton saying, we came, we conquered uh, with uh, Gaddafi. And then you have pictures with John McCain sitting with these people that you're supposed to be fighting. I mean, like, like Max Kaiser said, do they need to come into your house and rape your wife in front of you before you do anything? Oh, well, well then they would just say it was for law enforcement purposes. Uh, but that's it. We are a morally bankrupt country. There is nothing there. So McCain can meet with the heads of ISIS, and that's just the way it is. And... Just like Karl Rove famously said, they control reality. They will change what history supposedly is tomorrow, and we'll go along with it. And if we do, well, that's what we deserve. I appreciate your call. Mick in Australia, thanks for calling. You're on the air. Yeah, I think he's got something in the background going. We'll come back to him in a minute. Ryan in Alabama. Ryan, you're on the air. Uh, hey, Alex. Uh, I wanted to comment on Rand Paul's speech that he gave on Friday, and also I'd like to give you a quick story, if you'd let me, of something I really need to say to you personally. It was about uh, two years ago, I was 
doing a lot of drugs and stuff and sitting outside a diner locally listening to your show when I was approached by a woman and she just, you know, hey, is that Alex Jones? And a year later we were married. And I just wanted to thank you, man, for pretty much saving my life. Well, that's awesome. Uh, I'm going to hold you over because we went to, we've got to go to break here. Go back now, uh, Ryan in Alabama. So I guess you got married. Are you off the drugs now? I mean, tell me the story about meeting this little lady. Yes, it was outside a local diner. I was sweating off the drugs, you know, getting ready for work. Walked up to me. One thing led to another and happily married now. Listen to your show every day. Perfectly clean, going to college. Really turned my life around. Well, that's what a lot of people need, a good woman or a good man uh, to get themselves uh, satisfied on the straight and narrow. Sounds like a good lady. So, so, I mean, how did this start? She said, she said, hey, are you listening to Alex Jones? And what happened next? Well, two years ago, talking about your show, got her number. We listened to your show together for months before I finally got up the nerve to ask her, you know, well, of course, I asked her father for permission first, but just the best day of my life, hands down, and it's all thanks to you, brother. Surprise, 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 Sergeant, as Gomer Powell would say. White House fence jumper was on psychiatric drugs. Jerry S. Murphy told CNN his former stepfather, Omar J. Gonzalez, had served three tours in Iraq and was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder and paranoia, which his base psychiatrist was treating with medication. Boom! Infowars.com right now. Not hard to guess that. And the other guy dressed up in a Pokemon outfit with a Pokemon doll, a Pikachu, Little, little yellow creature popped up on him as well, of course. Gee, that person is uh, walking down the street waving a gun for no reason, naked. They're on psychotropics. Gee, that person just sliced their kid's arms off with a hatchet. They're on psychotropics. Gee, that person just went to school and shot a bunch of people. I bet they're going to be on psychotropics. Why 99 plus percent of the time, because I can hardly find any cases out of hundreds and hundreds where it wasn't the case, where they weren't on them. Because the inserts of the drugs say it can put you into a complete fantasy land. And you mix psychotropics with uh, stuff like Xanax, oh, you're really in cuckoo land now. I mean, are there crazy people that are so nuts you can give them drugs and it makes them better? Yeah! I have no doubt those drugs don't help some people. But statistically, they are time bombs, and they're very bad for your liver, very bad for your body. Have you read those side effects? I got a friend who's been on Paxil for 15 years, and they admit he's got all these health problems in Viligo, you know, that thing where you look like you're a vampire. Michael Jackson had it, and they, the doctor said, no, you're, the Paxil did it. And guess what? He can't go off of it. He gets totally depressed if he goes off of it. Uh, Ryan in Alabama, you go ahead and finish up this short segment with your question or comment. Uh, yes, thanks. It's uh, funny that you bring that up, Alex. It's like you read my mind because the first thing they pulled out of that guy's car that killed all those people this morning oh. was half a bottle of Xanax and half a bottle of Prozac. I didn't even see it. Uh, guys, look up shooting in Alabama today. So, so they admitted that, well, thank God, usually the cops are told to shut up. The cops openly said he, we, uh, found, we found drugs. No, 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 no. You will not hear about this. I have, being a former drug addict, of course, I have friends in the police department down there, and that was what he told me. They pulled half a bottle of Prozac and half a bottle of Xanax out of this guy's car. You're After kidding. He killed three people and then himself. You know, that's crazy. You called in about the shooting. I didn't know you were about to talk about drugs. And you're saying, I, I wish your police source off record would call me so I could confirm that so that we could then say police sources, uh, because that is so important. I'll try to make that happen. Wow, so your friend who was in the police department, what did they tell you? They said they found his car parked uh, down the parking lot a ways. First thing they opened it up, pack a cigarette, second thing. Half a bottle of Prozac, third thing, half a bottle of Xanax. 
And no doubt it was a major contributor. I mean, oh, yeah. Hap happens every day, but. Well, I'll tell you, Xanax is even worse than the Prozac family. Because I just, I read the news every day, so I see it. That Xanax will literally put people in a complete trance where they don't even know who they are. And then they'll just pick their gun up and just, you know, oh, just go shoot somebody. Really sad. Yeah. It cost four people their lives this morning. I'm sorry to say. Well, we're going to look into it. Thank you for the tip. Good to hear from you. Globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency potency super male vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals super male vitality by infowars life is so powerful that i only take half the recommended dose for a limited time we are offering 15% off Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality. InfoWarsLife.com.